Valens Research, Uniform Financial Analytics. Broadridge. Those of you who don't know Broadridge Financial Solutions, right? They are a data vendor for the asset management world, helping people, um, you know, connect to potential investors, etc. Um, when we come to the Valens Research app, the first place that we always bring any viewer any user of the of the uniform accounting data is always to the PVP chart. As I mentioned earlier, we're very literal here at Valence. PVP stands for Performance and Valuation Prime. What does performance mean? We're looking at the performance of the company, its return on assets, and its asset growth, and the valuations the market is paying for the company in terms of its valuation relative to book assets and its valuation relative to earnings. When we look at this, there's a couple of important things to see starting with the ROA. The orange bars here that we show are the as reported distorted gap return on assets for Broadridge. As you can see on an as reported basis, Broadridge's return is only 9% and is down from 12%. It's actually coming under pressure and it's a very weak return business. But in reality, once we make all of our uniform accounting adjustments, what we can see is over the last 15 years, this company hasn't had flat to declining returns. It has far higher returns than as reported metrics are reflecting, and they have been improving, right? They rose from 23% in 2017, I mean 2007, all the way up to 63% in 2019. Now they're down this year, but they're still incredibly robust. And if we were looking on this on an as reported basis, we would think we had a low return declining business, when in actuality, when we look at the long-term trend of this business, we have an impressively high return, high economic moat business here that we'd misunderstand looking at as reported metrics. But it's not just learning about ROA that's important to understand what a company's historic profitability and performance was. We also have to understand if that company can reinvest in itself. And again, here what we show first is the as reported earnings growth for the company, right, as you can see. And then we show the uniform accounting earnings growth. Same idea here. Look, there have been years, like in 2018, where, it, where on an as reported basis, you thought this company grew when it actually shrunk. Growth the last two years has also been a lot lower than investors actually think. This changes how we think about if this is a high growth business or if it's a low growth business, if it is a cyclical or, um, or tactical growth business or not. And the way to think about this is, if we think about ROA and asset growth combined, those two things combined really help us understand what a company's free cash flow is, but in a more visual and intuitive way. You can think of the ROA as like a cash flow from operations and the asset growth as the investment a company is making into its business to understand, is this a really a high return, high free cash flow business? Or just as importantly, is this company negative free cash flow, not because it's a bad business, but negative free cash flow because it's a high return business reinvesting in itself, which are some of the best businesses out there. Amazon for the last 20 years has been a negative cash flow business because of the fact they've had high returns, but they've actually had a situation where they were investing faster than their returns were. Why? Because they wanted to keep on expound, um, exponentially growing those high returns. Better understanding how we get to a free cash flow by breaking the two things up is incredibly powerful. But understanding performance is not enough. We also want to understand valuation to understand, yes, it's great if a company is a good or bad company, but also is the market paying up for that? And so with that in mind, the first thing we look at is value to asset prime ratio, which is this is a traditional price to book, price to book equity. And we compare that to our uniform accounting enterprise value to asset prime to understand what is the multiple the market is paying relative to a company's assets. Because what you can see, as you can see here, is as ROAs rise, the premium the market will pay for a company's assets rise also. Why? Because intuitively, the market investors have a required rate of return. Let's call it 5%. If you're generating a 5% return, well, the market's gonna pay one times your book asset level. But if you're generating five times or 10 times, right, what the, comp what the market requires in rate of return when you're generating a 50% ROA, well, you should trade at 10 times, or if you have 10 times with growth, right, even higher. And what's interesting here is we can see there's a very strong relationship between value to asset prime ratio and the ROA the company trades at. On the other hand, look at the complete lack of relationship between the multiple the market has been paying on an as reported basis 
and where ash reported ROA has been. It literally doesn't even make sense for you to be able to look at that ash reported data, but the uniform accounting makes sense. Similarly, we look at as reported price to earnings, PE, and we compare it to our uniform accounting PE to understand how profitable a business is too. What you can see here is right on a uniform accounting basis, this company is trading at a site premium. Why? Because not only have returns been strong, but asset growth has been strong too. The last chart we're going to look at here is TSRR. TSR, for those of you who don't know, is total shareholder return. That's the total uh, capital gains and dividend income you can expect to get from a company any given year. TSRR, the little r, is relative. Relative to what? Relative to the, uh, to the index that's relevant for that company. In this case, the S&P 500, because this is a US listed name. What you can see is, and so right, when this line is flat, that means that the company has performed in line with the market for that period. When it's up, that means the company has outperformed the market. When it's down, that means the company has underperformed the market. And what we see consistently is there is a incredibly strong relationship between trends in total shareholder return relative to the market and a company's uniform accounting profitability. A relationship that, mind you, there is no relationship at all looking at it from an as reported basis, where returns have been flat to down while TSR has been ramping up massively. These are the kind of issues when we look at uniform accounting data that we hammer home every single day because of the problem that as reported metrics don't reflect reality and don't reflect what the market's really looking at. So if you're looking at Azure reported metrics, you're not looking at the same metrics the market is because the big investors in the market, guys like BlackRock, guys like Fidelity, et cetera, are using uniform accounting-like frameworks. They're using adjusted accounting analytics framework to see through that accounting noise that you're not if you're looking at the Azure reported metrics, which means you're being left behind because you're only focusing on the world of arcane accounting mathematics. But just understanding what valuations are and returns is not enough to understand if a company is undervalued or overvalued. What we really want to understand is the next question we highlight here in the PVP, which is what is the market embedding for future performance for the company at current stock price? Right? These two light blue bars here, which are the forecast bars for the next two years, are what Wall Street sell-side analyst forecasts are for return on assets, once we take those adjustments and we once we take those estimates and we push them through our uniform accounting framework. But even more important are these white bars. These white bars for ROA and for asset growth are what the market is pricing in at a $15 billion valuation for Broadridge and a $137 stock price. Right now, the market is saying Broadridge is not going to have a lot of organic growth, and but it's going to see returns return to historic highs from 2019, right? It's gonna rise back to around 63%. What we can do, which is incredibly powerful, is we can actually play with scenarios to say, okay, are there other potential things that may, the market might be thinking? Might the market think that Broaders actually can grow at 5% a year, considering that they have made some decent growth the last couple of years? And if they did grow at 5%, what would returns have to be to justify current stock price? And returns would have to be above where they were last year, but still basically at the average of what they have been the last couple of years. So we can see is, which is really useful, we can see if Broadridge can't grow organically, if they can only grow through acquisitions, well, they need to see returns get back to all time highs. That sounds fully valued to me. Like that sounds like that's a company that quite frankly, unless they can really actually continue to ramp up profitability, they're probably fairly priced by the market. On the other hand, if Broadridge can grow organically, then any recovery they see in ROA is gonna be gravy and mean further upside for the stock. How much? Well, let's see. If we said they get back up to 63% ROAs with 5% asset growth, that means the stock will be worth $150, 12 to 15% upside. So right, we can quickly do that kind of scenario analysis using the tool, why? Because we're starting from a place where we can actually understand what the market's really thinking in a faster way because we're seeing through the accounting noise and we're getting to what real, the world of companies is actually showing us. Valens Research, the world's leading source for uniform financial analytics.